We were very excited about this place. It was supposed to be our dream house. As the renovations went on, we were happy, but we started to have a few concerns at how long it was taking. Take the room down, please. Every time we'd call a contractor, there was always an excuse and always an explanation. This whole thing here is cover up. When we finally moved in, it sort of hit us like a slap in the face. $170,000 out of their pocket for this crap? Yeah, baby. My goals. On the money. This is ridiculous. I've decided now to gotta take it all down. Michael doesn't love you. <laughs> Me too. Unacceptable. God, I love my job. <laughs> Marie and Alex, simple addition. Expand the house for the two daughters. Here's the problem. Price just over $100,000, right price. Climbs all the way to approximately $170,000 in total costs out of pocket. And everything's wrong. We had no running water on our main floor. I have a big hole in the ground for a walkout. We frankly couldn't unpack because there wasn't a single room in the house that was finished where we can actually put our furniture into. And we do feel trapped, like we can't do anything. It's a beautiful day. Mike is our only viable option to try and make things right. Nice to see you again. See you. See you. Marie, all right. Let's take a look. I'm actually a little frightened at what more he's going to find right now. I see we have an addition. Yes. I hired a contractor. Tell me the story. A friend of the family is a contractor. He's done work within the family. So I guess he's a trusted person by the family. Well, we hired the contractor about 15 months ago. Um, initially, this was supposed to take uh, six weeks. They look around a bunch of houses. He brings them to this house, and he says, this is the one to buy. This is the one that I can fix for you. So it becomes a friendship. It becomes a great fit. Basement, first floor, second floor. Exactly. It works. Or it's supposed to. So we're seeing that the kitchen is slightly finished. This cabinet is right on level. Very high on the right-hand side. Wow. We were constantly worried uh, with the younger one because we would find her um, trying to put cement rocks in her mouth, nails in her mouth. What do we have here? That's for heated tiles. That's for heated tiles. Yeah, that's the... Uh... She found some um, unfinished wires on the wall that she was um, about to start chewing on. That is live. Do not play with that line, please. It's just been really difficult in here. Okay, this is good so far. I'm feeling really good. Let's go downstairs. While the plumbing looks like a spaghetti factory, right from the beginning, I see that this line is lower here. This, the idea is this should be up higher to race the water down that way. I put my money in. If I cut this pipe right now, we're going to find a whole bunch of things we don't want to see in there. We got all our permits the way we were supposed to get. We were very happy about that. Before the drywall went up, we had inspectors come in and, and they looked at everything, the plumbing, the, uh, you know, everything I needed to, and we passed the inspections. One issue, two issue immediately. The floor has been compromised by cutting this out and running the new plumbing line. I see over there, and I don't even want to go over there, but let's take a look. We see the footing obviously was put down on square at the beginning. I can totally see it from this side. This is not how we put a door in. We do not bring it up to the floor joists. We actually bring it down to the base that should have been filled with concrete or some sort of concrete curb. Is this supposed to be temporary? No, this is no, going to be the basement to... door. No, it's supposed to be there. Okay. I see no type S on the block. It's a parge to put over the outside. Minimum code requirement with liquid foundation coating. They put the liquid foundation coating right over the cinder block. Not allowed. So how do we find out? Because we were told we passed inspection. You know, how many times do I go to a job site where there are no permits? Here there are permits, all proper permits, HVAC, electrical, plumbing, structural, that's four permits. They got them. They did their homework. They did it right. They trusted this man. Who told you that? Our contractor. Our contractor did. Okay. <clears throat> New bathroom? New bathroom. Yes. Unfinished. It still leaks. What do you mean it still leaks? I just wanted to take a bath and lay down in the bath, and I was in there maybe a minute, and my mother-in-law started screaming, there's water coming out of the pot lights. Let's continue. I'm getting very depressed right now. So this is our master ensuite. Now this is cute. This is really cute. First of all, this is not how we support a tub. Okay? You do not install the tub this way and then just throw a skirt in front of it. Did you see what I just did? Yeah. Yeah. We, okay. We've had plumbers come in and show that to us. He told us it was fine to use. Uh, we haven't touched it. We're too afraid. <laughs> Every faucet in this house leaks, uh, and we don't have a shower. So right now we have to tub bathe with this little red container. What's that? I think that's our heating vent. That's your heat register. And, and I guess we're going to heat half the tub. Once this is in place, I think it comes right yep. here. We need half, half the tub and half the bathroom. That's really cute. Is the toilet's right here. The tub's right here. Let's look at this. How's this door going to open? This is incentive to stay thin. Visually, I can see a lot wrong right from the beginning. As I start to open up, will it become a can of worms? I think so. Got a good feeling on that, which gives me a bad feeling on what I have to do to fix it. Oh, my God. You know what? I've seen enough. I'm going to phone the government right away. I'm going to find out what's been passed on this, what's been done, and 
I got a real bad feeling about your foundation. I already know we're gonna have to dig up the outside to see what they've done. The footings are incorrect. The structure's incorrect downstairs in the basement. Your bathrooms are incorrect. Now I'm really scared. And I'm not gonna promise anything. I'm just gonna do it. Does it still work? Now what are we gonna do about that? Rip this down and do it again? Nice. Oh my God. You know what? I've seen enough. We do feel trapped. I see over there and I only want to go over there. What's that? Did inspectors come in and see this? It's just been really difficult in here. Nice, we're ready to rock and roll. Pull the tub, pull the floor, inspect all the plumbing. I'm gonna drop the ceiling downstairs to see both bathrooms. any screws in the drywall in the bottom half here. We have wood in the wall behind the uh, drywall? Yeah. They didn't screw the drywall into that, actually. That was just floating. Really? Yeah. Take the whole room down, please. Okay. Nice. Are these skinny? I don't see many screws. Oh, it looks like a breather. Yeah, man. This is depressing. No surprises down here? Oh, yeah. So what they did, here's the addition. They put on, I guess it's a steel I-beam in here, and I, I like that idea rather than having a jack post. Look at this countertop. It's not level around here. Probably about an inch and a half at least. It just really. feels like you're this way, and then you're... Well, you can see the dip on this beam, and that is heavy. That's what should have been jacked up. He came and he jacked up this area. Look at the hump in the floor, and this is where it humps. Well, this this will show you why, because it's just pushed right up at this point. Now, what are we going to do about that? Rip this down and do it again? It's the easiest thing to do in an old home, especially if you're going to drywall over it. Level it from the basement first. We are going to have to open this. We're going to have to drape everything in plastic, and by the end of today, clean it up again. Right, okay. Watch yourselves. We're going to have all kinds of crap fall down. How many times do I got to see this? You're doing a renovation, you're gutting, you're putting in new plumbing, we see it all the time. What do we have in here, plumbing? What do we have here in outside wall? What do we do not have is insulation. Here we go again. We have vapor barrier up in the wall with insulation, tuck tape on one area because the drain goes up into the wall, right? And that's just vent. So we're doing that to the vent, but not the copper. That's funny. We're up. And they say oh, we're up there and then this runs down. It's open down. And that's not supposed to run down. That has to be up. That's right. If that's gonna leak, it's gonna leak from that over. That would never pass inspection. No. We have a kink line here too. Right there, see the kink? I'll tear out. We'll just start from scratch again. We're gonna have everybody in here today. John McCray and his guys. We're gonna dig up the foundation. Unfortunately, we gotta move the air conditioner to get the tractor in. We're gonna get this tree down as fast as possible. I can't believe that didn't fall and take the fence out, leaning totally into the neighbors. Murray. This is the tree here. It's nothing serious. I know you're used to taking down a hundred at a time. I think we can just uh, get up in that main crotch and just take it out piece by piece and throw it back over into here and then walk it out. A lot of properties, all they've got is this type of a tree, which is fine, as long as you maintain them. But in this instance, uh, where the tree was and where they did the digging, they took the root system out of the one side, so it made it very unstable. So you just tie it, cut it, and pull it? You got it. Now this is a truck to have. All in one. Two guys, rip it up, cut it up, shred it up. I want one. Johnny. Good morning, Mike. How are you? Nice to see you again. You too. Well, I seem to call you a lot, eh? Well. Look at this. This is uh, just a little depressing. Uh, <laughs> it's I don't know why they didn't form the stairs in the first place. There's no type S. As you can tell, we, they just sprayed the liquid foundation coating over it. <sighs> what we have to do is get right down to floor level on the inside so that we can reset all this weeping tile and bring it all over to here. Gravel on it, patch the wall, drainage board, backfill. Yeah, no parenting. So it's so not necessary these days, you know. Uh, the industry has really stepped up with product development. People want to use the basements. It's part of the house these days. Hi, Mike. How are you? Great. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. All the footings were laid on square, and the cinder block then went on top to square, and they went off the footings. Now, if you see it like this, fine. We're probably going to see the rest of it outside, but when you see it this thick, is, is it the same on the other side and the yeah. other side of the wall? Do you know what the soil bearing capacity is like? It may be worth getting a geotechnical engineer to tell us, because it, it, um, if we find that we only need an 8-inch wide footing, then having a one-inch projection on one side isn't a problem. It was open to the elements for the winter. We do not see any cracks in the block whatsoever, which tells me it didn't move. Yeah. That's a good sign. Yeah. So if they can say it'll it'll be fine, I'm laughing, and all we got to do is pour concrete. We're going to pull out all this plumbing, so whatever you say, I'm not going to touch it until you give me up a plan. I'll do a few hand sketches with the remedial work. We can send a copy to, uh, to Mike, and he can build right from our sketches. We don't need a full set of drawings. Look at this. It went right over the top. I'm telling you, I'm getting so frustrated. Look at this freaking crap. Are we even tied in the ceiling? We are not tied in. 
And since you cut these plates out on either end, these are two separate floating walls. And as you can see, it's not even attached. I think that's why he had plywood out here, to strengthen this whole wall. The floor is all wrong. I mean, everything's all wrong. I'm really getting frustrated here now. That means we're going to cut this bathroom. We're going to drop this wall. We're going to redesign the two of them. And I got a really bad feeling downstairs. Well, it's two bathrooms. It's wonderful. Let's look at the third one. There's a GFI. So far, I am seeing that the electrical appears to be fine. So we see the electrical, and whoever did the taping was good. Plumbing, outside wall, no insulation. This bathroom gets gutted. I'm gonna put them in the hotel. I'm gonna rip this place apart. I'm gonna put it back together. But if you're gonna do it, do it right the first time. I can't say it enough. So I stole you out of an apprenticeship program, did I? Yeah. <laughs> How long you in for? It was four months in school and then 480 unpaid hours. And after that, it's work from then on. And how do you feel about this business? I love it. You so love much it? fun. It's really empowering. Such a great woman. So how long do I have you for? 100 hours? 100 free hours. That's 100 right. free hours? <laughs> yeah. The actual course name was called Women and Enhanced Skill Trades. Nice. Yeah. I like it. So it was good. 22 women in one class. It was awesome. Please. You do what you have to do with this plumbing, and we're going to raise this floor. Corinne is going to help you today. Thank you very much. <laughs> Usually I'm by myself. It's a pleasure to have someone. Thanks. All new plumbing in the basement, right up through the kitchen. All new plumbing in the kitchen. All new plumbing in the bathrooms. It has to be done. If I was an inspector, I would not pass. And you just, it doesn't pass. That's all raw sewage the water flowing already it's all flowing down this way i'm just very upset at this guy right now because all the plumbing's wrong here it all runs this way we're going to tie in we're going to go over we're going to run downstairs the plumbing that leads in here if all this plumbing is wrong i'm going to bet this plumbing is wrong no insulation in the wall there no insulation in the wall here where's the sink the sinks in the center stove dishwashers here okay we're not vented it's not a surprise plumbing in the center that saves me from ripping all this down I'm going to put them in a hotel. And I'm going to rip this place apart. And I'm going to put it back together. A couple things I'd like to show you. The good positive thing here is that all your vents do go up through the attic and out through the roof 100% proper. Oh, good. However, we thought at least the work he was doing right. was good work. The structure has been compromised. So we're going to have major structure fixing across the center of this house. We're going to be raising your floor in the basement. It's either malicious intent or he didn't care enough or he just didn't know enough. All plumbing. Uh, to do with uh, drainage ventilation is incorrect from the basement right up to the top of the house. Nothing he did was right. We have to bring in a soil specialist to make sure the footings that were done incorrectly will hold the way it is. If not, we have to underpin absolutely everything on the outside. And I don't think it's malicious, but it's certainly the other two. He didn't know enough, and at the end, I'm sure he didn't care enough. I have gutted completely this bathroom up here. I was blown away by what I saw. This one was also being gutted. This one's being gutted. I'm going to leave you this uh, bathroom right now for the next, I'd say, half an hour till you can beautify yourself, pack, and I'm getting out of this house, okay? You all right? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, it's just mind-boggling how somebody could be so bad and not realize it. To Mike. Very, very nice. Thank you so much. I'm honored. Look out my truck. See you soon. See you soon. This is why we open this crap up. People wonder why their pipes bang. What, am I the only one ripping apart here? Sorry, right. okay. <laughs> Doesn't anybody remove this stuff? No. He drywalled over it. Yes, that's when I took this wall off full of uh, tiles, this wall decided to come with it. Never, ever finish anything with leaving the old stuff up. How do we know what's on the wall? You know, that's a good point. Is there mold in behind that? Is there bad electrical in behind that? Has another contractor in, been previously in 20, 30 years ago and hit something in the wall? You want to go and put a brand new bathroom up and cover it up? Not a smart move. A double top plate, but then even secure it in. Right. It's garbage. Let's take this down. I built a bathroom that can outlive you if you do it right. It'll outlast you. But do it wrong, you're gonna be doing a new bathroom every five years. It's just the way it is. What we wanna do is an outside two by four, two two by fours, and back to standard, which would be three 32 inches out. So what they did is they're 16 inch on center coming up, cut out for the taps, and put in a one by, what is that, three? <laughs> and they cut that one as well. Yeah. This whole thing here is a cover up. It was a brand new bathroom, but everything was old. 
So they just drywalled over it and made it look brand new again, right? Keeps the costs down, makes everybody happy. Remember, looks are deceiving. That is just so pathetic, it's ridiculous. I come in, open it up and say, who the hell did this? Everything here is ridiculously stupid. Oh my God. Here we go again. Now I'm realizing you're sloppy from the beginning. I don't know how he lives with himself. We have to bring in a soil specialist to make sure the footings that were done incorrectly will hold. I have a concern with the footings, so let me show you. Yeah. Obviously, they started off totally unsquare with the footings. Now, we've dug down to the other side. They had a wider footing here, so I think we're fine with this. But you can see here, we have yes. no footing. It's more on the outside. More so they're unsquare side. and then tried to square with the cinder block. So okay. uh, Dave has recommended you to do a soil test. Okay. And we can do it right on the spot? Yes. We'll find out today what we're really going to have to do. I'm only hoping we don't have to support this house and take out that foundation and put in a new one. Well, it hasn't shifted and it hasn't cracked, which tells me more than likely the soil's good. I'm just using uh, construction common sense. You can see this is what you're sitting on, this brown okay. material here. It's sort of a clay, part silt, part clay. Worst case scenario, that would be it. Secondary is an underpinning. We may have to underpin all the footings in here. Uh, did you like clay? or? Well, clay's, yeah, this actual soil type really is not the main issue here. It's how strong it is. Take it as it comes. That's all I can do. We're going to use this, I call it a pocket penetrometer, which gives a strength measurement. And then we got this 1.5 tons per square foot, which is uh, 3,000 pounds per square foot. So we're lucky. You're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. You know what? I'm a happy guy now. Yeah. So we don't have to underpin? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're good? So we're good. We can see the weeping tile right there. Obviously, it's too high. We want that weeping tile down by the footings. We want to make sure it's level across the back. That way, water can flow level right through to the drain that's supposed to be in the staircase. They've already fixed this side and brought it down. So by the time I get to the corner, we'll find that piece that they have in there and tie back in. Everything here is ridiculously stupid. It just really is. I'm going to put uh, one coat of Hydro Shield on, and then I'm going to put some fabricated mesh on, and then another coat of Hydro Shield. With the two coats, it turns into its own membrane, which allows elasticity and movement if there's any shifting or cracking in the foundation later on. And then we put some uh, six mil poly over top. Then we put our drainage board on top. Bring it up as high as you gotta bring it. Doesn't matter, we'll raise the height of this floor. I already know that uh, to go over top of this, we're gonna be pouring at least three inches. You want running water down here, just like a little bit or something? Yes, let's make sure we have water for if we have to mix any concrete or we have to put out a fire. They like working with Brynn? I like her a lot. <laughs> She's a good worker? Yeah, I heard good things about you. Yeah. Good. <laughs> I want to be able to walk on it without any holes in it. Good. Oh, all right. Oh, this guy keep calling you up here, man. I'm sorry. Just wanted to show you a couple of things, like these. These are all not attached on the outside walls here. We got a couple of attached there. This is the only one that's actually attached. These ones aren't, and all the way down that side. The funny part is, it's really how could you screw drywall to it, right? You know, if they're all moving, how do you put drywall up there? Well, for them, it was get it up, screw it. Didn't matter if it moved. Bring it down and tape it. So it's going to be held by plaster and not proper screws. No good. So good catch. Just make sure you get some screws in there. The tub does that. Yeah. Take this, this angle. Yep. Make it yourself. The 45. And maybe you could, we could have something here. If we did that, it would have to be symmetric. So in other words, we'd have to come out far enough to the point where we come across and come back in because we can't just do a. It'd be too wonky. When you're doing a bathroom, you want to think of everything, not just the functions of the bathroom: tub, toilet, sink, etc., shower stall. How can we lay it out? What is the best design? We have a square bathroom. Anytime there's a square bathroom, let's center the door. It gives us wall space to use. By bringing the door to one side, it eliminates putting anything on that wall right there. So by centering it, we have toilet, we have sink, and now we've displaced the room to get the tub and shower in, and we can open up that shower door. It'd be interesting anyway. Mm -hmm. Ceramic tile wall here, mm -hmm. glass, glass over the tub. This looks good. This may work. This may be a very unique look. What we're going to do is just take the two by four and bend it this way and peel the screws off. We'll pull out everything in this area, we'll frame our darn weight and then just cut out the drywall and then repair the other side. Peel it off the back, but we want to damage this side. This side should be really good. Like that, Damon? I do like that. That's a nice little trick. I do like it's perfect. Works for me. 
I'm not gonna go far on a flat tire. <laughs> Joe, problem. $170,000 later, and here we come and take it all down and do it again. Can we make this work over the tub? Definitely. Well, it, as long as it's got a wa uh, watertight uh, trip. Okay, so we're going to have a five-foot tub here. Okay. So now we're probably going to have to take the fan, put it in this location. I need you to pull out these wires that run across here so we can get two studs in here and fix up this outside wall. we got to pull out this really, really bad bowed one. A shower stall with a new angle. Bad tub. They really want this tub, and we've been fighting all morning on how we can incorporate it. Well, that pot light's going to have to get moved so we can try to center it off over the tub also? Right. So this one's got to be moved. Fan obviously has got to be moved. This one here probably works. This is incorrect. This should be GFI protected. As we can see, it's not. In most new homes, you'll end up having one GFI and one bathroom. And then off the load of the of the GFI, it would pick up the other bathroom receptacle. This homeowner would have been you know, under the false pretense thinking they were protected properly and definitely not. We took all the plumbing out of the house. Okay, right from the main pipe coming in into the house, the drain pipe, and the water service pipe. So you have two pipes coming in the house. So it's almost a little bit easier than a rental because you're not attaching to anything that would be existing. This will be my house now <laughs> and the plumbing. I'll take responsibility for it and it's nice to do it from scratch. It is. Inside, yes, our weeping tile is going to come from this side. And from here, our connection is just around that corner there, okay. uh, nicely covered up. We're going to connect here and then we're going to have a four inch uh, floor drain right here. Which will then run inside. And that's, we're going to have a dedicated line uh, to uh, the inside, to the sump box on the inside. I'm not going to go far on a flat tire. <laughs> I'm flat on my other vehicle. Here's the exercise. Okay, let's go, guys. Let's get the gravel in. Let's go. Let's go. You got two guys shoveling. Two guys moving. Three guys down there pulling. We're putting the buckets. Slide it down. Assembly line. We'll have that stone moved in public 20 minutes. I never want to see rocks get my life. <laughs> We're just trying to get as much drywall up as possible in tight quarters, and it's going okay. Oh, this is our uh, one of our last pieces of just normal drywall, and uh, we're almost ready to tape and tile. We're doing a Dietrich system on the floor. It's a waterproofing system. This is going to keep any water that gets on the floor out from the wood. We're going to thin set it down, and there's a layer of fabric there that'll bond to the floor, and the top layer will actually move. So if the house moves, everything moves separately. So your tile tiles will stay. You'll never get cracked routes. Trim that, and that's the way I want to see it. That looks good. Do you have a problem? These run a two inch, which I thought was a vent pipe, going in the old chimney. I yeah. looked from the attic, I looked from the first floor. I can't determine whether we'll open up this wall now. Pull it out, yep. break the wall, okay. find out. By the way? Yes. Nice haircut. Thank you, Mike. We got an outside wall. These pipes will be frozen by November. Nothing attached to anything. Man, this drives me insane. We can see how the floor slopes down. I mean, by code, we have to have a watertight floor with a drain. Look at this. I think this is fake. Oh, okay, so that's phony. No membrane in the floor whatsoever, and yet we have it here, creating a curb, okay? So was the idea to put a curb here to stop the water from coming out, but allow it to go through to the ceiling downstairs? Yes. So what is that? It's just a little con job is all it is. It's just another room, it's just a laundry room. Just more work I have to do, that's all. It's the uh, same product as we use in the walls and stuff like that. What it comes with is a pan that's already sloped towards your drain, and it comes with the drain, so here, the drain will slip right inside, and it will drain, it'll actually be flush to this here, so it'll actually drain down into it. So the pans are great, and it goes with the curb as well, and it all ties into the curdy system that you see on the walls here. So it makes a totally waterproof system, it's great. Man, you gotta love the rain, eh? Is it okay to lay over the uh, muck? Not really, eh? No, 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 you gotta watch nice. You say cut and block with the cement, you know? It's called hydraulic cement. And what it does is dries up no matter how much water it's... Uh, you can put it right underwater and it will dry five minutes no matter what. You can't stop it. So on a day like today when the footing is so wet uh, after the big rainstorms that we have, we're going to mix this into the first batch. So the first course of block we have now, this will set very quickly. Then we can put the weight of the extra block on top of that without a problem. Traditionally, you can only lay four feet of block at a time. You have to let that set up and then you can go on top of it because of the sheer weight of the block. It'll squeeze all the mortar right out of the uh, block itself. But we only have a six foot wall to go here, so that's uh, exactly what we're going to do. Uh, is we're going to put down that solid base down there. By the time we get two or three courses up, that'll be set just like poured concrete, five days old. And that'll give us the strength that we need so that we can put the block right up to six feet today. Now that's what I call a footing. This was a temporary support to put the beam in so we could do the footing. This is now gonna carry the load. I've already made it tight, which made this one nice and loose. So now I'll pull that one. <laughs> Gotta go up more. Okay, somebody else is gonna take a whack at this. Corinne! Yeah, I'll help you out. Okay, there we go. 
All right, you know what? I just wanted to bring you over here for a reason. <laughs> you put in your 100 hours for the apprentice program? Yes. You're full time, my dear. Yay. I love you. <laughs> you to work out this point. Okay, Mike, your turn. That's it. We have leveled it. Yeah. Now, who said this was going to be easy? We got to bring in a police officer to block off the street and control traffic, turn this truck around. This is no small job. Mike, we'd like to do an air test on it before you put it into the form. I like that. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. 7.4. We're good to go. This is 32C2. This is what the Ontario Building Code calls for outside exposed concrete. That's nice and strong because minimum code requirement on a foundation wall is 15. Is that correct? 15 OBC wall mix is what you can use on a foundation wall. Well said. So since we have the 32 outside, we're going to use it inside. Now we have air in this concrete. Do we keep pumping air for the basement? Normally we wouldn't put air in the internal concrete, but in this case, it's not going to hurt it. You wearing no special boots? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I see you have the drip edge on top of the door here. Yes. You've used the starter strips on the inside so that we have it finished on the bottom, which is we never see guys do this, and this is the way it should be done, so we're wrapped at least three inches on the other side. If moisture does get into the wall... Behind the pucks. Behind the pucks, it uh, travels down the cavity, down to the drainage track, and out the hole. Nice. We're sanding the walls so that they become straight somewhat. The walls are really bad to begin with. We sand it off. Well, the stuff needs to come out to here, so we sand it off an inch. So we're right at the, the borderline. We can't do any more. We put the chalk line from corner to corner and snap it. So uh, once we do sand it, it, it does become a, a straight corner. We're doing our best here to uh, try to bring it straight. This is the double header at the top of the stairs that run up to uh, the ceramic tile doorway up there. And the wood's a little rotten. It's not a big deal. It was a knot in the wood. I'm going to take a piece of wood to help displace the weight load on top of this undisturbed flooring. This is original, so as far as I'm concerned, this will hold it. All we really want to do is stabilize this load so it doesn't sink anymore. All right, that's enough for me. We have some hours. Oh, I got a hit. Well, this is what I call hell day. It's the last day. It's the day we get the house back to the homeowners. And we bring in around 20, 25 guys like we have here. Boom. Scaffolds come down. Out they go. In comes the soffit guys. Going to get the soffit, face it down, spout east drops. And believe it or not, by end of day today, this is going to be completely sodded. A tree in the end of the backyard. All the garbage in the bin. I've got about 100 vehicles on the street right now. I'm trying to coordinate everyone. i got to drop off the sod, the earth, get rid of the garbage. Make sure everything else is doing well. How are we doing downstairs? We have the sump pump in. Everything looks totally professional. Drain in the floor. Sump pump goes out to outside. Water comes in. Water goes out. Got the electricians in, hooking up all the lights. Minor repairs. We've moved the register. We're going to get a pedestal sink in. Tiles look really good. Open concept looks bigger. I like it. We have seven hours. I think we can do it. Got a blue spruce to go in the corner and Virginia creeper to go all the way along the wall so it'll climb up the wall and cover it. I gotta get up on that roof and with the telescopic pruner, I can take all this dead out of the street. I'm gonna need a big, big bin. You need a big bin. I got a bad feeling we're gonna need another bin. Trash come back there. Yeah, I think we filled this one up enough. I'd love to take this kitchen out and do it again, but I can't. You know, all I can do is try and put a little bit of lipstick and mascara on it and make it look proper. Finish off the trimming. No backer here. There's not even a piece here. I'm going to take the full lengths and rip down a gable and put it up against the wall. I'm going to take two other full lengths and put it on the sides of the cabinet there. We don't have an end gable here, but at least I've got a board here. We'll rip it to fit. We'll put it on. Talk about ass backwards. You couldn't even do receptacles right. I've got holes in the wall over there that were buried by boxes that we're now looking at going, <laughs> they didn't just screw up the structure, the backyard. The debris everywhere. Concrete was buried under the ground that we had to jackhammer and get it out of here. Bin after bin, get the garbage out. Oh, I got a headache. So what the engineer wanted was to help stabilize the outside load, cripple it into the floor. In other words, what I'm going to do is tie all the floor joists together with a vertical and a horizontal, and it helps lock up so the floor doesn't sink in this area. It helps stabilize the load from the outside in. I have one horizontal, one vertical. I'll screw it in. I'll toenail it, screw it there. Screw it here. I'll continue out wherever I can get a two by four, and I will. Wherever I can get a two by six in, I'll do the same thing. Stucco 
Central guys brought the stucco within an inch of the uh, concrete or left me an inch of concrete. I built the existing door jam out with a piece of two by four. And I just want to cap this off. I already spray foam the heck out of it all the way around uh, in here just to stop the airflow, insulate it. Hey, green side up, eh? That's what we've been doing wrong. Man, look at that. It's like putting paint on a wall. Right. Making up the down pipes now. Large square, better water flow, great for letting the leaves out. Don't plug up your eaves trough. The bigger down pipe you can get, the better. We're using uh, latex melamine in the laundry room here and actually all the bathrooms. Mildew will grow better on oil paint. So we're using a higher gloss latex with mildicide in it. And uh, we should have no issues. The guys are just flying inside. The painters are in the living room now. Bathrooms have been done. They're just waiting for now to dang it up there, get the toilet and the sink in. Go we'll get the second coat on. Then we start pulling out and cleaning up. We've probably got a good two hours of cleaning. So I was hoping by five to be done to start cleaning. So I could give it back at seven. Maybe eight. Or nine. So I was hoping by five to be done to start cleaning. So I could give it back at seven. Maybe eight. Maybe nine. I actually chose to start in the backyard for a very valid reason. Shoot. Look at the length of your backyard. Oh my goodness. I had no clue. I brought in my landscapers and we ripped out so much stuff. I couldn't believe what was buried in the back. We graded it, put down some sod. They've been working for two days straight on this. It's crazy. Brought in my foam and stucco guys. They've got all the foam and stucco up, your downspouts, east trough. From the outside, we had to dig up the whole foundation, completely do a, wa a proper waterproofing. And uh, Joe Umbrello, a wonderful man, he came in and he did the concrete here and also inside. We rose this whole floor four inches higher than the existing pad over there. First, I brought in an engineer who brought in a second engineer. First engineer is for structure. Second engineer is for a soil test to see if the weight load is good enough that I didn't have to underpin the foundation wall. We got away with that. We got lucky. It wasn't that we got away with it that I didn't want to do it, but the ground was solid enough to hold it. We had to pour three new footings, one in this place, this location, that location. We had to go down two feet in the ground at this point. Because you remember how bad this was, Yeah, didn't yeah, you? that was just all... We had, we had four different levels of flooring yeah. in this basement. Now you have two. <laughs> now you have two. Right from the footings up, structurally, it was all wrong. You now have a sump pump that pumps outside, you have a proper floor drain, you have 100% in this whole house, new plumbing. We completely took it all out. Wow. Unbelievable. Should I have to tear out everything? Do I have to take everything down and do it again? Only if it's wrong. As you can see, your island, there's no slope. There's no slope. <laughs> it's not. It's been leveled. We brought it up. I don't walk like this anymore. We finished off your cabinets. We finished off your other side. You have a little bit more room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As I remember when I walked in here, we had no room. Yes. yes. This is great. It's usable. It's safe. That's and everything's want. working without leaking. When I opened up the drawings on the job site that were stamped by the government, permitted plumbing, structure, electrical, HVAC, the permits were there. What was done was not done to plan. I had to go the laundry room. Oh. All the plumbing was on the outside wall, uninsulated. We built a sub wall on the inside and ran all our plumbing in the sub wall. There was a laundry room up there that wasn't in the plans. The bathroom, both layouts of the both bathrooms were not the way they were in the plans. The contractor unfortunately made it totally phony. He had a rubber base all the way around the baseboard once we pulled it off. This floor requires a drain. There was no drain. Homeowners can see this. If the plans say it should be done this way, they can see whether or not the walls and bathrooms are designed a different way. This is the attic access that you did not have before. For oh, some okay. reason, they closed it in. We checked yeah. everything up there. We're happy with everything up in the attic. Okay. It's one thing that was good. The gas guys, the ventilation guys, and the electrician were the only good people in this house. Obviously, the contractor took over everything else. But you have to trust yourself to say, okay, I'm going to have to keep an eye on this. I'm going to have to watch the money. I'm going to have to make sure that everything goes the right way according to plan. This was 100% got it. I moved the wall in, I built a proper two by six structured wall. I had to fix all the rafters in this area because oh. somebody's hampered up here and nothing was screwed in. What? Nothing. You must check out your contractor. You must. You must make sure they're licensed insured and know what they're doing. They've been in the business for years. You must make sure you'll follow through with everything that's supposed to be done. They went over the lath and plaster, broke this area from here onto the other bathroom. Right. Don't ask me why, but they did as much cover up as they could do. I can't get over why he spent so much time trying to cover things up and lie to us to our face when we questioned him on some things when he could have just done it right from the beginning. It looks great. It looks the shower great. works. It works. <laughs> I know, I'm gonna it's, wow. it's not gonna leak. Sweet. Awesome. I may have a few changes in here. If you notice, your doors moved over. 
Because yeah. it was in the wrong location. We've now opened really? the door to the toilet <laughs> so we don't see the toilet. Oh, works. Okay, look at your shower stall. Oh. It is awesome. Yeah. You're never going to see what we do until you actually watch the show. Right. I'm afraid. <laughs> your tub's not going to rock, and it's totally safe. It's totally not going to leak, and I think you can no, now have a shower and, and, and a bath. And it's not resting in a little piece of styrofoam? I put in a pedestal sink. Beautiful. Okay. Rather than the cabinet, it did not work for me. If you look at this, it looks rather big, doesn't it? Yeah, yes. much more airy. Yeah. We can actually walk into our shower now, open up the door and walk in. I feel like a weight lifted off my shoulder. Are you ready to come home? Yes. Seeing people actually enjoy what they're doing and what they did in a month, I'm, I feel sorry that the team had to do so much work for the faults of one man. This is amazing. Thank you so I much. See, my pleasure. The family is back. They're happy. Their lives are now. They can move on. They don't have to look back anymore. They don't have to deal with the contractor. And I recommend they don't. Forget about yesterday and move on with today. Keep smiling. We'll see you soon. Don't kiss me. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We've lost a champion. We've lost a superior contractor that's been in this business for years. It's going to be awful hard to replace that man. Great job. Did you cut your hand? It's a team, you know that? It's a team. <laughs>